Everyone was very surprised when they first announced his name, uh, when they announced the first name in Latin, which is what they traditionally do, and even the last name, no one really reacted in the crowd because no, no one really realized who it was. When, he, when they announced the papal name of Francis, people cheered. But uh, people were really, really taken by surprise. He wasn't one of the names that had come up as a likely candidate, although he was considered as someone who had been in the running last time. And he's 76, and people were thinking they would go for a younger pope this time. So it really was a surprise. Is there disappointment that they didn't go for a younger pope? I mean, 76, he could have been older, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, no, they had plenty of older cardinals to choose from as well. But uh, I, I don't know if I'd say there was disappointment, but uh, when they chose Ratzinger uh, to be Pope Benedict, who was 78 at the time, it was, it was considered as uh, the idea that they'd have a short papacy and possibly as a transition to a non-European pope. So that seems to have happened, but I think there was a little bit of surprise that they chose someone uh, of his age. But he seems to be in pretty good shape, although someone told me that uh, he may only have one lung, which is something we're yeah, trying to check that. out. But uh, he, yeah, he gave a very humble, um, he asked the crowd for its blessing before he would give them his blessing. And it was a very humble approach, and I think it resonated with a lot of people. I think the reaction has been so far very positive. He faces many, many challenges, doesn't he, Andrew? And I gather he wasn't part of the Curia, and many have called for the Curia to be completely revamped. So to some, I'm hearing that's a positive. But just go through some of the challenges that the new pope faces. Yeah, I mean, certainly the, the sexual abuse scandals haven't gone away, and uh, the Vatican needs to be dealing with those in a much more aggressive way. It needs to get out in front of those charges. Uh, it's not just a U.S. thing. These are things that have been happening all over the world. In some areas, the diocese and the bishops have been complicit in covering them up, and they need to deal with it much more aggressively, uh, because otherwise they're, they're really going to offend a big section of the faithful. Uh, you know, and uh, the Pope needs to deal with the, the push coming, particularly from the West, from a bit more acceptance on certain issues, social issues, homosexuality, women in the church, even contraception. Those, That's not something uh, where the Pope is likely to be particularly flexible on. Yes, he's from Latin America. He's probably more open to dealing with social justice issues and poverty. But these cardinals were all chosen by Benedict or John Paul II. These are not particularly progressive in, on, in terms of social issues, nor is, nor is it church policy. I mean, uh, Pope Benedict had always said that he'd prefer a smaller, more uh, committed church than, rather than the church changing its values to, to, to accommodate modern tastes. Andrew, just final question quickly. I mean, is there some disappointment in Italy that an Italian pope wasn't named? I know Pope Francis is of Italian descent, but uh, is there some disappointment because the favourite, if we can have a look at favourites, was, uh, was an, an Italian cardinal, wasn't it? Yes, I mean, I wonder if there's some disappointment among the Italian cardinals. Uh, I think the Italians uh, have become pretty accepting to the idea of a non-Italian pope. We've had... This is now the third in a row. But yes, I think there was certainly some hope here that the papacy would return to Italy. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a global organization. Yeah. And I think the Italians <laughs> are very aware that they're at the center of it, but it's not theirs.